Good evening and welcome to tonight's Investec Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason and this evening we have the best of the action from unbeaten Buckingham against Bowden, the University of Birmingham as its league leaders Surbiton, beaten at home to Clifton Robinsons and the Kent Derby between Holcombe and Canterbury. In the men's Premier Division we head to Reading for their visit of East Grinstead, league leaders Holcombe travel to Wimbledon and Beeston entertain the University of Exeter. Our first match in the Investec Women's Premier Division sees Bowden come down to Buckingham in search of their first win of the season against a home side that are yet to lose. Let's join Charlie Broom for the best of the action. Ball around the back and some pressure being applied by Nicholson and she's won possession high up the park now. Can Buckingham make Bowden pay? It's back to Nicholson on the reverse stick and coming across is Tennant to get it out of harm's way. Good pass back to Nicholson who's all unmarked. Goes round the keeper on the reverse stick. Just not enough power to beat the defender. Penalty corner. It's gone to the left hand castle. The strike coming in from Shipley and cleared off the line by Shaw. Back to Shipley who returns it with interest. Zoe Shipley. Makes it to Buckingham 1, Bowden 0, and a fine penalty corner as it's batted down, cleared by Shaw. One touch from Shipley, straight into the back of the net. This ball goes to the defender, and there's the outlet ball, and an opportunity here perhaps for James. James one on one with the keeper. Still going, James. A couple of stick tackles going in, and James rides the lot to double the lead. Natasha James with her second goal of the season. 26 minutes in, Buckingham 2, Bowden 0. And didn't she do well, having received the ball outside the 23? Took the defender out of the equation, goes around the keeper. And uh, good advantage play by the umpire. Penalty corner for Bowden. It's going to be a straight strike. No, they go back to the injector and it's saved by Jackson, although the whistle has gone for height. Plenty of space on that right-hand side, but well read by Jackson. Around the back. There's the visitors. And then the ball up finds Batchelor. Now, Batchelor, what can she do here? Comes inside, beats both defenders. Advantage being played. Batchelor on the reverse stick. Oh dear, she's blazed it over the bar and having done so well to get into the shooting position, she'll feel that she really should have made the keeper work. At least hit the target, you never know what might happen. Good work on the reverse stick. And balloons it over the bar. On the back by Buckingham. A little bit of pressure coming. It's good work from Higgins. No, it's not because she's been Robbed by Tennant and an opportunity here. And the stick tackle comes in. And it's a penalty stroke that's been given. It was Tennant who applied the early pressure. And there is the tackle coming in from Nicholson. And the stroke is scored. Sean French makes it 2-1. 25 minutes left to play. Bowden. With foothold in the game now. Keeper guessed correctly, but the ball went over the stick. Bowden looking for a way back into this if they can. And that's nice work down the left hand side. Now, is this an opportunity here? Oh, it's a good save from Jackson. It's still alive. And Buckingham survived. Have a look here. Jackson does really well to get her feet together. And avoid being nutmegged. And the follow up. And well saved too. Even applying the pressure, desperately trying to find a third goal that would give them a little bit more comfort. And here goes Richards. Richards into the circle. Phoebe Richards doing really well. Now, can she get the shot away? Richards! Oh, she's put it over the bar. Well, Bachelor had a chance for Bowden in the first half which she blazed over the bar and here French oh Richard sorry does the same thing got to try and make the keeper work 
fired forward by Shipperley and it balloons up and uh, it's quickly taken and a chance here perhaps Richards looking for the supporting run oh dearie me they've contrived to miss it lovely ball into the centre and as the ball comes back actually you have to credit Tennant with a really good touch Harrow Smith, lovely ball forward. Free hit given, quickly taken. And a chance down this right hand side for Leite. Leite drops it back to Richards. Richards back into the centre. Here's an opportunity, and it's been dragged just wide by Porter. As Richards plays it in, it comes back off the defender, and it's just a little bit too close to Porter, who drags it past the keeper's right hand post. Ball forward it's from on Arrowsmith and space down this right hand side for Buckingham into the circle and the long corner of Tennant and that will be that it's all over Buckingham have a second win of the season Bowden still looking for their first victory it's finished here Buckingham 2 Bowden 1 So Everton went into their match against the University of Birmingham on top of the table having only conceded once in three matches the visitors had also yet to taste defeat with one win and two draws so far in this year's campaign. Down the left hand side go Serbton ball is pulled back by Hunter and the shot comes in and Twig gets the shot away and they win the penalty corner. Lovely running by Hunter, pulls it back after keeper makes the save, Twig forces the save into the body of Costello for the penalty corner. Free hit taken by Twig. Twig plays it into the circle. It's still there, bouncing around. And the shot finally comes in from Catlin. And the keeper makes the save. But Servitant applying the early pressure here. At the moment, Somerville and her goal stay intact. Penalty corner. Ansley wears five at the top of the circle. I mean, it's going to be Ansley. She slaps it and it's in off Georgie Twig. I think it also gets a little bit of the player on the post. We'll have another look from behind the goal. But either way, Surbiton are a goal to the good. Keep your eye on Costello. Left the screen. Just comes up off her in the end. But it's Twig's goal. And the corner for the University of Birmingham. Shot comes in and they're looking for the deflection on that far post. And Ansley does enough just to put the player off. Good defensive work from the serve to number five. Given to Owsley. Lovely work from Lily Owsley. Owsley driving at the centre of the serve and defence past Ansley. She's got a stick in the stomach off Giselle Ansley and she's won the penalty corner. And there might be a little more here. The umpire reaching for her pocket and Giselle Ansley turns around to see the yellow card brandished in her face for that tackle on Lily Owsley. Great running from Owsley and just there Ansley just leaves the stick in and picks up the yellow card. And the corner goes to the left hand castle, goes back to the injector. Chance here perhaps but that's brilliant defensive work by the replacement post player Collins. Usually Ansley on that left hand post, but Collins does her job beautifully. University of Birmingham desperately looking for this equaliser out to the right hand side. Here is Ansley. Nearly Ansley. Can she make ha something happen down this right hand side? She's showing plenty of pace to get past Martin. Still going, Lily Ansley. Can she pull the ball back across the centre of the circle? She can, but it's stopped in its tracks. Sideline ball taken by the front. She gets it back. And that is the final whistle. And that is a very good home win for Surbiton. The University of Birmingham coming up just short. Final score, Surbiton 1. The University of Birmingham nil. Now we go to Beeston and join up with BTV for highlights of their match against Clifton Robinsons. The home side went into the game one point behind the visitors after two draws so far. Clifton Robinson's approaching the left-hand side as the D of the attack the 
That's a shot. Again, it's just wide from Clifton Robinson's. They've got five in position, two further back and one to the right of the D. The ball's played to the top. It's been trapped, smashed towards the goal, goal. and it's a goal. Bees take the lead in the eighth minute. I think it was Bridget Kittle who got the, the final touch to knock it into the roof of the net. Bridget's on the castle on the left-hand side, number 15. And she's just got in front of the penalty spot and got the final touch. Yeah, Firing. good corner. Let's see what happens with this one. We've already had a goal from a corner. What can the visitors do? Uh, focused on the left-hand side, and it's a slap towards the goal. And good save. Great save, and it's been tapped in. Equalising goal for Clifton Robinsons. Uh, it was a good first initial save, but obviously dropped into... Yes, it was a terrific save in Nikki Cochran at first, but while she was on the floor, the ball lobbed over her. Good pressure this from Beeston, and it's going to be picked up. Jekin Arenda with the ball, pressing towards the edge of the D. Nice little layoff. Shot on target, and it's a goal! Fantastic strike there. Serena Barr. Serena Barr with a goal, but great composure for Jika Narenda to win the ball and get the ball across the face of goal as well. Great goal, great assist. Let's have a look at it on the replay. Yeah, she just takes it onto a reverse, smashes it through the goalie's legs. Great finish. And let's see what can happen this time. A lot of bodies to aim at for Bex Walker. She's gone to the apex of the D. It's been slid back and hammered towards the goal. Another good routine. Eloise Stenner there, passing the ball behind her back. Let's see what this delivery is like. Ball's been placed down. Again, Clifton Robinson's go with three in the goal. Okay. Driven in and just deflected high over the crossbar. Another great opportunity for Beeston. Clifton Robinson standing up to so Serena Bars press forward. Ball into the area. Scramble. Could this be number three? Oh. It is. Fantastic finish there by Lauren Burrell. Just let it roll onto reverse stick and nicked it over the goalkeeper. Really good use of uh, scrambling skills there inside the D. Close to the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper drawn and then just popped beautifully over the prone goalkeeper. Dotting the ball down once again. Getting us going. Clifton Robinson's turn over the ball. There could be a shot here. Oh. And that's another goal for Clifton Robinson's. 3-2 the score now. Good nick there. Nice early pass into the attacker. And yeah, just the, the faintest of touches. Quite possibly, yeah, I don't know. It, was, it just crept away from it, didn't it? Good interception again. Serena Barr. Notable with her, with her headband. Into space, picked up by Sophie McDowell. And that's space on the left-hand side, and that's yes. into the goal! Sophie Robinson there with a fantastic finish from the from the baseline. It's a very tight angle, just came, in, in I think, towards the goalkeeper's right-hand side, Andy. Yeah, uh, let's have a look at the replay. Uh, the b through ball was fantastic. Sophie Robinson filled off and made the space drawing the player towards her. Yep, just beat the goalkeeper low on the goalkeeper's right-hand side. It's going to be Serena Barr to inject. And inject she does. Slip ball, trickled in, oh. and did that hit the post? It certainly went very close to the goal and not in it. It's still 4-2, Beeston lead. Yes, with five minutes to go. This is looking like... Goal. It is a goal Deflection for Clifton Robinson's. There. Just in front of the penalty spot. I thought that ball was going straight through and was going to be left by Nikki Cochran, but what happened, David? No, I think... So confirmation that the... Full time. That is it. That is it. Congratulations, Beeston. Three points on the board. First win of the Premier League season. Seven goal thriller, David. Beeston four. Clifton Robinson's three. The Kent Derby always promises to throw up exciting fixtures and this one shaped up to be no different. Holcomb went into this match looking to replicate Serbiki's victory earlier 
to keep pace at the top of the table, whilst Canterbury are looking for their first win of the season. Free hit to be taken by Elliot into the circle, and the first time shot just wide of the target. Does Fag get across? I don't know. Free hit to be taken by Elliot. Elliot knows up her options, plays it forward past the first line of defence. Clulo has it. Oh, Clulo's just let the ball run and it's been stolen back. And there is Virengo Savino to get on the scoreboard. 12 minutes in and she scores her first goal of the season. And Canterbury will be disappointed because Clulo had the ball on the end of the stick. Just couldn't get rid of it and it just span away from her. And Holcomb took full advantage in that split second. And it's a neat finish in the end. Free hit for Holcomb. Into the head of the circle. Here's Chamberlain. Oh, what a finish from Turkey Chamberlain on the reverse stick. What a start to the second half. First goal of the season for Chamberlain. Holcomb 2, Canterbury nil. Ball comes in. It's touched. And the first time shot beats Fag down to her left hand side. Smart finish. Penalty corner. It's going to be Ballston with the drag flick. And Ballston has scored. And Canterbury, with 19 minutes of this match remaining, have themselves a lifeline. Grace Ballston with her third goal of the season. Thomas gets half a right hand on it that stops the ball, but not enough as it squirms over the line. Penalty corner comes in with a drag flick. Smashed down by the number one runner. The shot comes in. Clulo gets her stick on the ball. Clulo runs free to Chamberlain, who puts it over the bar. And Canterbury survived that penalty corner. Good number one running. And then the shot comes in. Clulo gets her stick on the ball. It squirts free to Chamberlain. This time Chamberlain can't hit the target. Free hit to Holcomb. Anyway, we'll do at this stage in proceedings with time running out. It's over the sideline and that is it. It's all over. And Holcomb get a third win of the season in the Kent Derby. Canterbury though, still looking for their first win. Final score, Holcomb 2, Canterbury 1. In the other match of the day, Sophie Bray scored early to set East Grinstead on their way against Slough. She then added a second early in the second half before Ellie Reyes scored a third in the 61st minute. So Surbiton and Holcomb still lead the way ahead of Buckingham and East Grinstead. Beeston are now fifth after their first win of the season. Slough, Bowden and Canterbury are still looking for their first victories at the foot of the Investec Women's Premier Division. The opening match in the Men's Premier Division was the Saturday night game at Sonning Lane with East Grinstead the visitors to Reading. Both sides had mixed starts to the season with one win and two losses each. Reading will look to play it down this right hand side, then into the middle, and an opportunity perhaps here at the very start. Shot comes in, and on the reverse stick, it's dragged across the face of goal by Cleet. And East Grinstead survived the early scare. Lovely corner goes to the left hand castle. The drag flick is straight and true, and Charlie Ellison gives Reading the lead on the 13th minute, straight down the middle. And Smith is nutmeg, beaten by pace. Have a look from behind the goal. Smith just can't close his feet fast enough. Penalty corner to East Grinstead. And they go to the right-hand castle. Look at the deflection, and they get the deflection off Van Grossen. But he deflects it up and over the bar. Free hit, left by Clee, taken by Ellison, played forward and oh that's a lovely little left and a chance here for Morton. Oh yes, Reading 2, East Grinstead nil, and Lee Morton with a fantastic goal. What a start to the second half and it was a lovely little layoff as well as the ball comes in here. Richards just lays it off and East Grinstead cut open, Smith ruthlessly exposed and Reading 2 up. And East Grinstead. You just can see that the second must score the next goal you feel if they are to get anything from this and well they've got a chance here down the right hand side and here's an opportunity for Van Grossen oh he's scored what a restart by East Grinstead 
And I make that what just under 13 seconds between the whistle for the restart and the ball hitting the back of the net. What an instant response by the visitors. A really well taken goal by Van Grossen. The ball on the right hand side is picked off and Reading with an opportunity to counter attack and there's space on the Reading left if they can exploit it. Into the circle. Here's an opportunity fired across the face of goal. And East Grinstead survive. It's Morton who led into that left pocket, receives the ball here, and on the reverse stick, fires it across the face of goal. Penalty corner to East Grinstead goes to the left hand castle. And the deflection, well, actually, it's saved onto the foot just there. The foot of you. Another penalty corner. Looks like it's going to Simon Faulkner. In fact, it goes to the stopper. And that is slapped just wide of the Reading goal. Slap coming in from Stott. Maybe I'll see if we can get a touch. Free hit for Reading. Just on the edge of the circle. And this is really good play. Another good effort from Lee Morton, who rode a couple of heavy challenges. He got the shot away. Really hard shot but it was straight at Smith who made the save and the follow up never came it was cleared three hits Reece Grinstead are looking for this equaliser and it comes into the circle oh they've hit the post and it's cleared only into the middle and put over the bar oh dearie me what an opportunity there for East Grinstead the reverse stick shot comes back off the post from Stott and Bowden Lifted over the bar. Ball out to this right hand side. Smooth Clee. Clee coming in field. Off the foot of time. Takes the free hit himself. Clee still going. Lovely skill from Clee. He's still going into the circle. Clee, can he find the finish? Oh, yes, he can. And Jack Clee gives Reading a two goal cushion with five minutes to play. What an individual goal from Jack Clee. Clee. Played it onto the foot there of time, took the free hit himself. And Stott couldn't get out of the way, beats time, comes back inside and beats Smith at his near post. 3 1. In the back, go Reading. Here comes some pressure. And the ball forward has been picked off by Bowden. Bowden into the circle. Here's a chance. And my word, that is Lee Morton coming back to make the last ditch tackle. Watch here, the number 11 somehow gets his stick on the ball to deny East Grinstead. There is Bo Faulkner down the left-hand touch line, but he can't find Wilson. It's over the back line for a 16. Time is running out for East Grinstead and time has run out for East Grinstead and Reading get their second win of the season. They've down East Grinstead by three goals to one. Beeston would be looking to get back to winning ways after their first loss of the season last week, whilst the visitors, the University of Exeter, went into this one on one point having not played last weekend. We join up with the BTV team once more for this one. I'm sure they've done their homework on Beeston as well. Well, I think bearing in mind their, um, their coach, David Hacker, with uh, all of his experience, he'll have uh, made sure that they're very well prepared. I'm sure he's one of the reasons why they're doing so well. Attention to detail. Now we've got a beast and player down in front of us. Yeah. I think it's uh, James Blackwell. And that's Henry Croft, gets his first goal for Beeston. Counter attack breakaway, and um, not very much marking going on. Lovely early through ball. To ask questions about that marking there, Steve. Oh, definitely, that was. Um... So, corner number two here for the University of Exeter. Whipped out to the top of the circle. Have a spin inside. And the shot goes Beast. wide. Well, that's wasteful again. Good routine, though, there by the students. Yeah, Not this time, he doesn't, yes. though. And it's uh, uh, Elliot Tybel. One that the uh, keeper, I think, will probably think he should have done a little bit better. Nice and simple. So 
seems to be a long half this one, but uh, <laughs> partly because I'm used to quarters from, uh, from last weekend. Beeson come on the attack again. Keepers uh, out of goal. position and the simplest of tapping goals. And Beeson are really flying here. Elliot Heibel again from a, a lovely layoff pass from Richard Lawrence. Well, the conversion was the easy bit, but it was a beautiful pass. number of attempts at long balls from Beeston have been quite easily picked off. I think they need to improve that. There's nothing wrong with long ball passes, but uh, they need to make them much more accurate than that. A good player behind the Beeston defence here. Ball played across, first time shot coming in, and uh, Sam Hutchman, who was making ground to his right, just able to check his, uh, his movement there and make the save. Absolutely huge difference. They nearly had one a moment ago, and I'm sure there'll be other opportunities. There won't be many in the minute remains there in this first half. They might get one here. Go. Keepers come a long way and he had to leap high in the air. Very good save indeed. Out it comes. Shot comes in, good save by Hudgwin. Saw it early. Um, well, Beeson had early success for the penalty corner, but uh, it hasn't been desperately effective since then. Can they change that little run here? It's another away. one wide. The, the cardinal sin when flicking a short corner. Get another goal, but really a bit more focus and concentration in the D. There we go. Pressure on the circle again here. Ball bouncing around. Keeping some well. Penalty oh, stroke. it's stroke given here. Nice movement of the ball. Keeper somewhat spread eagled. Well, this is Chris Proctor on the penalty spot here. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, not much you can say about that to uh, make it better for Chris Proctor. But it's clearly going to be a, a difficult uh, league table to read. It is. And there'll be many twists and turns along the way. Hold well Simon Hochwan. Keep us down, but he's still active, as you can see that. Well, sometimes the nature of league hockey, I think you can find that the the game is not the most exciting, as we've just witnessed in the second half there. First half goal's pretty good. Um, so certainly Beeson will be happy with the points. Terrible conditions in Wimbledon for the visit of league leaders Holcomb, who were looking to inflict a third defeat in a row for last year's league winners. Oh, my God. 
Amsterdam Westminster continued their good start to the season at Seven Oaks. They took an early lead thanks to Josh Kelly in the sixth minute. Kelly added his second of the game in the 26th minute. In the final match of the weekend, Surbiton ran away with the game against Brooklyn's Manchester University. Alan Forsyth got a hat-trick and both James Royce and Ben Boone scored twice for the visitors. Dan Vincent and Richard Slater getting the consolation goals for the home side. So Holcomb still topped the table with a hugely superior goal difference over Hampstead and Westminster. Surbiton and Beeston ran out the four top spots. Whilst at the bottom, Wimbledon are yet to get off the mark, with Seven Oaks, the University of Exeter and Brooklyn's on just a single point. So that's all for tonight. Make sure you're back with us next week for another Investec Monday Night Hockey.